I'm Jordan, and you're watching Fixbook. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to replace your brakes and rotors on your BMW 525i. This one's a 2002. Okay guys, and here's the tools you'll need for today's project. We have an extended 3 8 ratchet, a big old ratchet here with a 17mm socket to take your wheels off, got a flathead screwdriver, needle nose pliers, a 6 inch clamp, a 32 ounce hammer, we also have a 7 and 6mm hex or allen socket, we also got a 16mm regular socket, a quarter inch ratchet with a quarter inch to 3 8 extension there. Um, and along with your regular 3 8 ratchet. So, um, also you'll need a jack and jack stands, brake pads, uh, brake grease. So, with all said, we'll go ahead and begin today's project. Oh, one more thing, the PB Blaster or liquid wrench is also useful. So that said, let's uh, go ahead and take a look. So, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and lift up your car. And a good place to jack it up is, you can see, that bar, rectangular bar looking thing. You want to put your jack stand right back here by your wheel. It's going to go right there. That's where I put mine. Okay guys, the next thing we'll do is remove our wheel. Now this is actually a difficult thing sometimes on these 525 eyes. We have 17 millimeter bolts holding on our wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and zap these guys off. Alright guys, now I just took my bolts out and basically you can see I'm wiggling here and this wheel is not coming off. This is a real common problem for your 525i and probably other i models as well. I'm not real familiar with the BMWs, but if you want to look at how I got this wheel off and how you go about removing these really difficult wheels, um, search for Fixbook BMW wheel. Again, Fixbook BMW wheel. And by watching that video, it'll give you a more in-depth uh, way showing you how to actually remove this wheel when you can't just hit it and pull and get it off. It it's quite a task. So watching that video will. Uh, help you get this wheel off. So next I'll show you what we do once we have the wheel off. Okay guys, the next thing we're going to do here is we've got this little clip guide to get out of the way and basically you just pry and he pops right out. You just take a flathead screwdriver and pop that guy out. Next we have a brake sensor which I'm going to use this guy. I'm going to reach in there and oh my goodness he is gone. We're supposed to have a brake sensor here. Uh, my customer's car this brake sensor is missing but basically to do that you would reach right on in here and it just clips on to the brake pad so you just grab a hold of them and pull out and just kind of set them off to the side it's not that big of a deal um so yeah i'll go ahead and uh i'll tell you more about that when we get this caliper off okay guys the next thing you're gonna do is reach around here follow my finger to the back and top of this caliper i'm not gonna be able to get the camera there but you're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and you're gonna wiggle this guy and to the um, you're going to pull off this cap right here, and this guy is going to be covering the 7mm Allen fastener that you're going to reach in there with your ratchet, and you're going to break this guy loose. So, oh, there we go, broke him loose. So we have two of those fasteners, um, that other one will be right there in the opposite place, and once we get both those fasteners out, we're going to compress her piston so we can remove the caliper. I'll show you that here in just a second. Okay guys, a little sub note here, when I was doing the bottom 7mm Allen wrench there, um, I found it useful to use a quarter inch with a little quarter inch to 3 8 to get my socket in there, because the 3 8 inch, because the 3 8 inch ratchet, uh, the head was too big, so it made me fitting in there like funny, and I was just barely getting on there, so by taking this quarter inch, I was able to get on there nice and tight, and you'll know what I'm talking about when you're working there, so yeah, use a quarter inch ratchet, and a quarter to 3 8 drive extension there, and then with your 7 millimeter Allen socket there, and that's how you'll get on that bottom one. Okay guys, now, once you've got it loosened up, you'll just be able to pull this guy off here, and see, that's gonna take a little bit of working. I might just go, I was gonna say, I'll just go ahead and grab my screwdriver, but I got it off there. And now we can see, we've got this brake pad here, that comes off in this pad, which is stuck to the piston. And you can see there's only one hose coming off, there's two brake hose. And again, I, like I said, normally we have two things coming off here. And I'm gonna show you what I was talking about earlier with that uh, sensor thing there, the sensor going on your brake pad. Now basically you can see, wait, I'll give you a close up here in just a second. 
Alright guys, and here's our close-up. You can see there's like a little U-shaped thing, and basically it's just a plastic piece, um, and there's metal in there too because there's a wire going to the sensor, but it snaps in and snaps off. So, like I said, you just reach in with pliers, you'll grab a hold of it and pull them off. And I'm sorry, my customer was actually just missing it, so I couldn't show you there. Now, um, also, if you break one of these, um, don't worry about it, it's not that big of a deal. They're frequently replaced. They're about 20 bucks at your local parts store. So, now a lot of people replace them with the pads, so uh, don't sweat that. So, next I'll show you what we're going to do to put it back together. Okay guys, and before I jump ahead to things, I'm going to show you uh, how to replace this rotor and the things you need to know about rotors. So sit back for just a second and listen what I have to say about replacing your rotor. Okay guys, so this is going to be our quick rotor talk. The reason to replace or turn rotors. Alright, for one, there's a minimum thickness. If the rotor measures below the minimum thickness um, and you don't replace the rotor, it can cause personal injury or death because the rotor can break while you're driving. Um, now a reason to turn the rotors, if when you're driving you press the brake pedal, feel that pulsation in the brake pedal, sometimes you can turn them and fix that for a while. Um, if you can afford it, it's better to just put new rotors on there because the thinner they get, the easier they warp. So um, that's why you turn them to replace them again. It's unsafe to drive with them if they're below the minimum thickness and you're putting new pads on there. So that's something that some people miss. Um, it's dangerous. It can be... Uh, major injury, um, many lives dying kind of thing. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're replacing your rotors. Okay guys, now the minimum thickness measurement for this rotor is going to be 18.4 millimeters. And as far as removing your rotor, what we're going to do is we're going to come under here and we have two fasteners holding your caliper bracket on. It's going to be 16 millimeter fasteners. And if you can follow my fingers right back behind here, and I'm just gonna take my ratchet and buzz those guys off. Once you have both your bolts off, this bracket will come right off. And here's the two bolts. That's what they look like. So go ahead and remove those two bolts. And now I'll show you what's next. Okay guys, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is we have a six millimeter Allen socket fastener here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get on this guy. And I went ahead and sprayed some uh, PB Blaster. You can take a liquid wrench. Um, kind of assist you because these guys can kind of be tough and mine just broke loose right there So it's a uh, not that big of a deal. So for me at least so now I'm gonna zip that guy out And we're gonna see about how easy it is to go ahead and remove this rotor. So let's take a look at that here in just a second Now once you've removed that fastener there the six millimeter allen wrench thing there um, Go ahead and spray some PB blasters on around there and then we'll take a hammer and also this is after you've depressed your e-brake because if you don't depress your e-brake you've got a pad in there holding on this is actually a drum when this is a rotor this is a two-part piece here so go ahead and take a hammer we're gonna beat along there and that should break the connection there and that's why it's important you spray it in there and that's why we beat on it so we can break the seal this has up against that piece right there and now we've just removed our piece there so that's all there is to removing that rotor right there Okay guys, now, as far as replacing these um, shoes right here, and in my career, I've never had to replace them. I think they're made to, to work for the life of the car. Just because this is your e-brake only, I do believe, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And pretty much, watch any of my other drum brake videos, that should give you a good idea. Should you need to replace these, chances are you're not gonna replace these ever. Um, again, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, but yeah, go ahead and uh, put your new rotor back on. It goes on as simple as it came off. Just make sure you didn't get any um, lubricant in inside here because that's going to uh, have a negative effect on the effectiveness of those uh, shoes there for your e-brakes. So uh, now I'll show you what you need to know about putting everything back together. Okay guys, the minimum thickness for this rotor, what I found through Google search is 18.4 millimeters. And the way you're gonna do this is grab all these tools right here and we're gonna go and stick them on in there and just put them over there and then we're going to examine our number here. So 18.4 millimeters. Again, double check with your parts store. Okay guys, the next thing we're gonna do here is after you make sure your six millimeter Allen socket's in there and um, you're gonna put your 18, or I'm sorry, 16 millimeter bolts back in here, make sure they're good and tight. The next thing we'll do here is we're gonna look on the other side of this caliper and we're gonna push out these fasteners. And these are your slide pins. And 
you can see them right here. What we're going to do is wipe them off, um, reapply some silicone and some grease here so they slide back and forth. That's going to ensure that your brake pads wear evenly. If these get stuck, sometimes your brake pads won't wear evenly, so make sure we do that. And then I'm going to show you how to compress your piston. So let's take a look at that here in just a second. Alright guys, and I've already wiped down my slide pin. I've got my brake grease now, so I'm just wiping it on here. Just apply a nice smooth layer and make sure you got it all the way around. So then, I'm going to put my little thing up here. I'm going to reach back in here. I've already done the other one, and I'm just going to stick my slide pin back in his home. And then, I'm going to make sure he slides back and forth good, and he does. So, again, that's going to ensure good brake pad wear. Now, I'll show you how to compress your caliper piston all the way back in, so we'll be able to set this down with our new brake pads in. Okay, guys, so now, we're going to take an old brake pad. We're going to stick it in there. We're going to take our C-clamp, and I'm first I'm going to run this guy all the way down, and then we're going to clamp that piston in. Okay, so here, I've got my piston compressed. Or, so here, I've got my tool tightened all the way up, so now I'm compressing the piston. And you're going to go nice and slow like this. You can damage your piston seals if you go too quickly, and you don't want to do that. That's a pretty expensive part, so I'm just going to compress it all the way back. And once you've got it compressed all the way down, this will stop tightening, and it'll, it'll get really tight, and it, it'll act like it doesn't want to move anymore, and you'll know you've compressed it all the way back down. Then I'll show you how to put our brake pads back in, our new brake pads. All right, guys, now how this works is we've got our new brake pads here. We're going to apply some brake grease here at the end of these brake pads and then we're going to do the other side and the one with the clips here we're going to stick on the inside and we're going to stick that in the caliper the other one we're just going to go ahead and set down in the bracket so i've got my guy nice and lubed up here so i'm going to set this one brake pad down then i'm going to grab my caliper i'm going to reach back here and stick that brake pad in there like so and i know you guys can't see it but i'll give you a better shot here in just a second i'm going to reach down and stick my other pad down there and I know you didn't and I know you didn't see it but check it out here in just a second all right guys and here's that other brake pad you didn't see and all I did there was I took my pad and I just set it right down in there now we're gonna take our caliper which we've preloaded with our new brake pad and we're gonna try and get this guy to sit and line up and you're just gonna kind of wiggle him until you get him in there and make sure he's still in there and Now I'm gonna move so I can see it. I'm sorry if I'm blocking you. And oh, guys, the fasteners, those slide pins you put back in, you're gonna push them out so they're not in your way. And that's what's that's what I'm hung up on here. So I just push them back, and now I should be able to slide right down in there like so. And I'm in there now. I'll get on the other side there and get my seven millimeter Allen sockets, my seven millimeter. Allen bolts there and I'll get those guys fastened in and then this guy will go in here put our clip back on and we're almost back together okay guys once you've got your two fasteners tightened down don't forget to put your caps back on go ahead and slide mine back on and next we have this little clip and where did he go oh, there he is all right I'm gonna grab him and basically guys this works pretty easy you just grab him like that and then he sits on the outside of here and you push and you snap them in there. Man, I've got to get in a more sturdy position. And then we're just going to put our clip on. We're going to reach on in there. And he goes on pretty easy. Like so. I got one side in. And there we go. There we got my other side in. So basically, the idea is you got your two longer arms. They're sticking on the bracket. You get your two little pokers inside those two holes. And it just snaps back down in there. So, um, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, other than that, you just gotta put your wheel back on. Before you take off, make sure you depress your brake pedal. It's gonna go all the way to the floor, floor, and then pump it up until it gets stiff. That's gonna ensure that your brake pads are gripping that rotor. Also, since you've done this, if this is your first time doing brake jobs, you may notice a funny smell and smoke coming from your wheels, because normally when the brake place does it for you, they test drive it for you, and uh, that's why you don't see that. So after your first test drive, you may see smoke and have a funny smell. And basically, that's just the grease on your rotors and your new brake pads. It's just uh, wearing all that stuff away, and that happens with your first run with your new brakes. So that's going to conclude today's project. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.
hey thanks for watching guys if you would like subscribe comment and all that fun stuff and thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time